The purpose of this video is to kind of um, bring some insight into our foam cup calorimeter lab in which we are trying to determine the specific heat of copper metal using some pennies. To just kind of get a feel of what calorimetry is, we know that we are measuring heat and heat is a type of energy that flows from a hot object to a, a cold object. Heat is usually measured in a unit known as a calorie or in the metric system known as a joule. We understand that one calorie is exactly equivalent to 4.184 joules of energy. The term calorie is a unit that is used to measure how much energy it takes to raise one gram of water by one Celsius degree. It takes one calorie or 4.184 joules of heat to make one gram of water warm up by one Celsius degree. And an instrument we often used in the laboratory is called a calorimeter and this is a picture of one now and it's quite simple. A foam cup calorimeter is used to measure the amount of energy transferred as heat under constant pressure conditions in the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction or it could simply be a physical process as well as transferring heat from a hot object to a cold object. We use a constant pressure calorimeter. We call it a foam cup calorimeter and literally that's what you're going to use in your experiment are two coffee cups kind of nestled together with a lid. A foam cup calorimeter is an inexpensive device and it consists of just nested styrofoam coffee cups with a loose fitting lid and we just put our thermometer into the system to measure temperature change. Let's talk a little bit about the setup of our lab by just looking at this particular example problem. It gives us an idea of the type of math that is coming our way. Let's just take a look at this picture. In this beaker, this would represent our foam cup calorimeter. We're going to place cold water into this foam cup. Now in this particular example, we're placing 255 grams so I'm just kind of tabulating a little bit about the information. The mass of the cold water that we're placing in this example is 225 grams. Now in our lab we are using 100 grams measured by the volume at, by the graduated cylinder measuring out 100 mils. But in this made up example we'll start with 225 grams of cold water. We have an initial temperature of this cold water and it says that it's starting at 21 degrees Celsius. We know its mass, we know its initial temperature, and we also know one other piece of information and that's the specific heat of our particular water. By its very definition we know it to be 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Just as we had mentioned the very definition when we talked about calories or joules of energy, the heat content of water is the standard in which we measure everything else as a comparison. 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius is the specific heat for liquid water and it is a constant. You can count on that each and every time you work these problems for water. So we know the specific heat, we know the initial temperature, and we know the mass of the water. There's some other information that we know in this example and that's for the iron that's starting quite hot. Now in our lab I know it will be copper but here the example is talking about iron. This picture here is showing a glowing red hot chunk of iron metal. Its initial temperature is at 99.8 degrees Celsius. It's also telling us its mass is 55 grams. So from this part of the picture we can see the initial temperature and how much that hot iron weighs. Now remember in our lab we're getting the copper metal hot by using a saucepan, right? And so we start with a very, very hot piece of metal and some very cold water. We put the system together and that's what this is showing us. 
When I take the metal and drop it carefully into the cold water, we start to see heat flow. Heat is a type of energy that flows from a hot object to a cold object. You can see here the temperature has finalized at 23.1 degrees Celsius. The cold water warmed up and the hot metal cooled down. And what we now find is that the final temperature is going to be the same number for both systems. It's 23.1 Celsius degree. The final temperature is 21 point, or sorry, 23.1 Celsius degree. So that's in common. So what we understand is heat flows from the hot object to the cold object. Heat flows from the hot metal to the cold water. And the first law of thermodynamics is very clear that says heat lost must be equal to heat gained. Q equals Q. Heat lost is equal to heat gained. So heat we know is Q. We've learned that in our lessons from our chapter. Heat is a, I'm going to say lost just so we see what L and Q means and this is gained. Heat loss is equal to heat gain. And we also understand that heat can be measured by knowing its mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. If we know for the cold water the mass, the specific heat, and its change in temperature, our first task is to measure how much heat was gained by the cold water because it would be exactly equal to the MC delta T for the iron, or the copper, the iron in this problem in terms of uh, how much heat was lost by the hot metal. I'll call it metal from now on because this picture was actually showing us iron, but I know our lab is going to use copper pennies. Alrighty. So here's what we know. We're going to say step one, let's solve for the heat gained by the water. Heat gained by cold water. And you'll do this for all three trials, but I'll do it just, just with this one example. So the heat gained by the water is going to be equal to the mass of the cold water. Now remember I put in this made up example, 225 grams of water was sitting in this beaker. You will be using 100 measured by your graduated cylinder, but I'm going to follow this story problem, 225. You're going to model yours after this example. We all have the same specific heat constant, joules per gram degree Celsius, always the value for water. It is a physical property that's unique to water. Just like water, it boils at 100 Celsius, freezes at 0 Celsius. Its specific heat content is 4.184. Now the change in temperature for the cold water, it started at 23.1 degrees. No, it started at 21 and warmed up to 23.1. See the difference there? TF minus TI, 23.1 minus 21, it changed by 2.1 degrees. I have the mass of the cold water sitting in your foam cup. This is the specific heat constant we use for water, 4.184. This is the change in temperature, the change in temperature from where it started to where it landed. And in this example, we said it warmed up by 2.1 Celsius degree. I'm going to hit 225 times 4.184 times 2.1, and I'm going to find joules of energy by doing so. When I hit 225 times specific heat of 4.184 times my delta T of 2.1, I find a value of 1976.94, and that unit would be joules of energy. Remember what this represents. This is the heat absorbed by the cold water. 
we know now that that same quantity of heat absorbed is equal to the heat lost by the by the metal, by the hot metal. We use that Q, the heat that we just calculated, to solve for the specific heat of the metal. Alrighty. So again, it's Q is equal to MC delta T. The Q we just solved for up above. The M is the mass of my metal. The change in temperature is subtracting Tf minus Ti. And this is our target variable now. The target is the specific heat. So I'm pulling out from here the answer to the heat gained by water, 1976.94 joules. Heat gained is equal to heat loss. So once we calculated the heat gained by water, it now becomes the Q for, this for the next set of problems. How much did our hot metal weigh? In this example, it was 55 grams. You will be using the mass of your copper penny for this step, but I'm going to model my problem here. 55 grams, the mass of this uh, hot iron. The specific heat is my target variable. I have to keep scrolling to find these numbers. The temperature changed 99.8 and 23.1. So the difference between the Ti and Tf, 99.8. Subtract out the final 23.1. I get 76.7. degrees Celsius. That's my temperature change. So notice a significant difference here. Water warmed a little, but the metal sure cooled down a lot, and that's very normal. You probably noticed the same thing in your experiment. Now let's rearrange this to solve for C, the specific heat. To isolate the variable C, we have to say 1976.8 nine four joules divided by fifty five times seventy six point seven you want to put that in a parenthesis to make sure you're taking the product of those two numbers nineteen seventy six point nine four divided by parenthesis fifty five times seventy six point seven And I get an answer that is 0.46, and I'll round a little bit, 9 joules per gram degree Celsius. Alrighty. This is the specific heat of our metal. Two steps we followed. Step one. In step one, we used all the information about the cold water and solved for Q, MC delta T for your cold water. Step two, we used that answer for the Q, the heat lost by the, by the um, metal. We knew its mass, we knew its delta T, and we pulled out the specific heat of the metal. You're going to be asked to calculate your percent error, and I'll just remind you of that formula. The percent error says take your experimental value and subtract it from the theoretical value provided for you in your uh, lab report. Take that difference and always make it positive. Remember these uh, lines here just simply represent absolute value so that we always report error as a positive number. So we're just taking the difference between what we got in the lab. So this is your lab answer. This is the published correct answer. What do we accept to be true? The difference between your answer and the correct answer divided by the correct answer expressed as a percent will show how you got your error. This is what we would refer to as our experimental value, what we ended up calculating based on lab results. I hope you found this video helpful. Now follow that process but using your own numbers for this experiment.